Here we go! On to the 200! Nice! I immediately was attracted to this plate carrier. Let's look at it in real life. I have two colorations to show you. You guys have been watching them here in TMP for a long time. Here we go, multi-cam, tag, plate carrier. Running some Blue Force light speed pouches. This, guys, is a very squared away LBE option. It's gonna be hard for me to show it all on camera. I'll do my best. Having tested it for over a year now, I'm in love with this option. It is outstanding. Jumping into the talking points, as stupid as they are, it keeps me organized. Versatility. One thing I want from an LBE option is the ability to have real, real estate. Can't speak. I run pistol horizontal here. You may hate that option, I understand. For me, it's a one-stop shopping thing, uh, especially as a reviewer. For instance, this is the old discontinued TAC Force brand, made in China, so sorry. TAC Force brand, it is excellent though. Molly attachable horizontal pistol case, and that can accept all kinds of pistol pistols as I've discussed before. It is awesome. As a reviewer, I'm throwing in autos, revolvers, it works, and it works best up here. I don't want to run it down on the right-hand side where I'm going, rollover prone, getting it in the dirt. It has interferences with two-point slings, single-point slings. Don't like it. It's just how I run. Getting back to the real estate, though, I need a place to put that. This tactical assault gear plate carry has plenty of real estate. You can see it has room to attach a horizontally oriented pistol holster. How about rifle carrier? Well, on this one is configured for M4, three M4s. This is a trio of Blue Force gear. And plenty of room, plus I'm running a SOG feel pup currently. That's in testing. I will usually run a knife on my LB as well. Again, back to the one-stop shopping concept. On the side. Also, capabilities to carry either rifle or pistol. Here we're doing uh, the tactical assault gear, magnetically held pistol carrier. I love it, by the way. It's excellent. I'll break that out probably into its own mini review. Um, and then on this side, I have basically a camera carry case because during the review, I'm always stowing still cameras, movie cameras. Works great. If you're getting the idea that it has plenty of area to attach what you need to attach, you are correct. If you need more, you can go to a kangaroo pouch option and start stacking out. Like I said, perhaps in some other reviews, I generally, for what I do, don't prefer that because it's one more of a loadout than I want. We're talking a level three, I mean, loaded for bear loadout. I don't personally need that. If you're a troop, you probably do. The more ammo you carry, the more options you have. But that's what you would do with a tag plate carrier. Um, versatility is excellent. Uh, let me show you the features real quick, how you're going to first doff it. Big word for getting into it. Uh, this is another selling point for me for the tag plate carrier. It's simplicity. First up, the tabs to enter the plate carrier are a little bit obstructed. I recommend attaching 550 cord. Seems like every time I've gone out, someone for some reason needs 550 cord and I keep taking these little tabs off. Not burning my 550 cord <laughs> para bracelet for that use. Uh, on the other one, I'll show you here in a second, they're longer and more accessible. That's about the only downside I can see. So you're gonna pull this up. This is a side entrance and you'll see Velcro closures right here. You just basically detach one side. You obviously don't have to do both sides and you swim into the plate carrier. Easy, easy, easy and it's real easy to attach. It is not exactly quick releasable. If you're looking for a QR plate, um, this is technically not one, although if you make these 550 cords long enough and you practice it, getting out of the tag plate carrier is actually pretty quick. Let's take a look in the interior while we're here. And kind of going along the comfort TP. One thing that is lacking in the tag plate carrier is a mesh. That's gonna add cost, especially for a US made rig. I see very few that have mesh that are just not exorbitantly priced. Well, you just saw that one uh, I showed you in the catalog is $450 MSRP from TAG and it's mesh aligned. I do kind of miss that. Uh, the mesh I find, just like I said with a Condor overseas produced MOPC, that is uh, whatever it was, 
uh, reviewed a while back. It is comfortable. It allows ventilation better. I'm always sweating, as you guys have seen on camera. It lacks that. On the upside, because there's no mesh, it does not get seeds and other crap and debris from the fields. And I don't know about you where your field you know, area of operations is going to be, but in mine, there's lots of that. That makes it tougher and more wear resistant. There's no mesh to wear out and over time, especially under high loads, to just basically fall apart. Okay? Armor and H2O integration I'll hit now since we've got this thing opened up. On the inside of this, and I always run these, uh, one for uh, training purposes, in other words, I'm used to carrying the weight, uh, soft armor plates. If you're a soldier and you're running e sappy plates, I don't know if you could hear that, e sappy plates, these will accept the extra large ones. That's 11 inch by 14 inch of the e sappies. That's what size these are. I got these from Diamondback Tactical. I've shown them many times. These are LTAs-3 -A Alpha-1s. Uh, these are level 3A soft armor, not rifle plates. I personally don't have a need or honestly the strength and endurance to run sappy style plates, which by the way in the large version are running 6.3 pounds and the XL version a P 7.2 pounds. Some are even heavier, like 8 pounds. Look at how that fits in though. And look at the attention to detail and the construction of the armor pocket on the tag plate carrier. Notice the sealed, uh, not sealed, but the bound seam right here. Excellent quality Velcro. The stitching is absolutely superb. No flaws whatsoever. It is uh, double stitched on the exterior of it. This is a pocket designed to carry a lot of weight. This adjustable pocket here, if you have one that extends out a little bit, will, you know, maybe attach lower or higher. It really works perfect with this XL sized soft armor plate. On the side, and some guys have complained about that. this, the side pockets on the tag plate carrier are perhaps just a little bit small. They measure, if I'm not mistaken, seven inches high by six and a half inches wide. They fit this soft armor side plate to perfection, as you can see. This is how you would insert in that. Some guys say uh, they, the eSAPI plates, the small eSAPI plates, and by the way, if you don't know, ESAPI stands for Enhanced Small Arms Protective Insert. It's what our military guys and gals are fighting with over there in uh, Afghanistan and whatnot, and future wars too. And they're going to have future versions of that as well. This might be a little bit small for those. For you civilians, you law enforcement officers, I recommend running the vest, if you can get your hands on the soft armor, just like I have it configured. Uh, most guys are just not going to be up to the task of loading up, I don't know, like I've talked about lots and lots, 50 pounds, 60 pounds of gear in their LBE and running around all day. It just wears you out. The other side, uh, this is the front of the vest, about the same. I will show you this, this is interesting. On my soft armor plate, I do, uh, maybe, it's on the other one, I don't have it here. I do have a sternum plate protector, maybe I'll remember to show you that. Uh, that's the interior, simple Simon. Uh, no mesh, like I said. There's your adjustable shoulder straps. Look how clean that shoulder is. You can, by the way, remove these pads if you don't like it. I've left them on and I did not find them to be a problem or causing interferences on rifle shooting. That's a huge thing, too. Uh, in some other reviews, I've talked about the really uh, jacked up shoulder areas, especially the butt pad areas, which prevent a good butt weld. <laughs> from your rifle or your carbine. Lots of them suffer from this. This is a pretty clean arrangement, I have found. Very clean shoulder, enough said. There's your drag handle, retained by extra strong Velcro, which I really like. That's a good attention to detail. It's just outstanding uh, because it's not going to get hung up on anything. Everyone should have uh, that, I think. Uh, I'm talking every LB option should have a drag handle. The Molly as it's sewn from Tactical Assault Gear, is just superb. It is Molly specification, unlike some other options that perhaps have some variances. This is US made, US spec, military specification Molly. Any decent pouch you buy will fit it. The stitching, just awesome. Look at that. And by the way, look at how that drag handle extends beneath the Molly for more strength triple stitched as it goes, as is all the molly. 
I think one thing lacking on the uh, rear of the vest was a strip of attachment Velcro. I had to hand sew this one on right here. Not a huge deal, but it should have it for name, morale patches, whatever. This is where you would adjust the circumference of the tag plate carrier right here. And it might have a secondary function I'm not too sure about. Maybe, I don't know, an addition of a soft armor plate. Which, by the way, in my estimation, the tag plate carrier has enough room in those armor pockets to accommodate. Uh, by definition, the ESAPI configuration is going to use the hard ceramic plate and it's going to be backed by a soft armor plate as well. The pockets are big enough on this tag plate carrier to accommodate it. How about weight? This is one of the reasons that I am attracted to the tactical assault gear equipment. They are what I call weight aware. Let's go back to the 2009 catalog and this is what garnered my interest to begin with. This is from, at the time, VP, VPSL's Chris Osman. And I think TAG has changed ownership. I think things have changed over there, I'm not sure. But as far as I can tell, the quality's still there. They're adhering to this formula I'm getting ready to read to you. By using new lightweight materials that were, that were not readily available two years ago, TAC has moved in the direction of tirelessly working to reduce the weight of our equipment. Thank you, TAG. Someone else who's getting it. It's one of the, you know, my stomping points here in the Nut and Fancy project. More than half of all TAG gear you see in this catalog is now made of 500 weight and 330 weight nylon. This fabric is extremely lightweight but very durable. Thank you very much. I totally agree. In SHOT Show 2010, as I went from booth to booth, the, the very uh, suppliers of LBE, this is something I was requesting. I was like, we need to make the gear lighter. There's really no need to run a thousand denier fabric. I think not just TAG, but a lot are coming on board. This is a good representation of that philosophy. Empty. The vest weighs, get this, two pounds. That's right. Two pounds with the quality levels I'm showing you, U.S. made. Now, configured, and let me show you another vest, and this one's kind of loaded up, again, according to my one-stop sh shopping concept. It's packing a Glock 17. You guys have seen this on camera a lot. It has most of the things I will need. It's a very simple setup. I throw on my plate carrier. I have integrated soft armor, which is pistol resistant. I have my handgun capability and a capability to attach whatever handgun I want, uh, you know, in the reviewing process. Glock 17 in this case, riding in a Serpa. Okay, then I have my magazine pouches configured. Uh, and I have a knife, this case a Griffin from Cutlery Shop and Testing. Now without the handgun, without the magazine, magazines in it, but the pouches in the knife, the whole rig, 8 pounds, 4 ounces. That's a reasonable carry weight, guys, especially when you consider one ESAPI plate or setup is about the same weight. And yes, during every run and gun in the Nut and Fancy project, I'm running this, and I do run that soft armor for an extra measure of protection just in case something weird happens out there. I shoot with a lot of different people, varying abilities. Not everybody is always safe if you catch my drift. How about colors? Well, I've shown you two. And they're my two favorite, Multicam. That was the first one. It is outstanding. It's a great coloration. It is licensed cry Multicam, of course. This is uh, Coyote. Another great coloration. Some others available, Ranger Green, Black, ACU, ABU, and the now popular Atax camouflage is available. One of the downsides, perhaps, of this tag offering is the straps themselves are they're nylon, and so they're not camouflage. So this is ATAX, but the camouflage is really kind of disrupted by the straps. In this version, it doesn't make a difference, right? Because it's already Coyote Brown or FDE, whatever. The multicam one I showed you kind of breaks up the multicam effectiveness. That's one of the benefits I told you guys about the Condor off-seas produced MOPC. Um, it had the sewn ones that preserves that camouflage. Just a minor downside, that's all I'm saying. Check this, uh, I showed you the armor integration on the inside. Did you notice there's no H2O pocket? In other words, no camelback pocket. Don't fret, because that's pretty standard with most 
load bearing equipment vests or plate carriers and I don't look at it as a downside necessarily and here's how I corrected it and you guys have been asking some of y'all have been asking what's that he's running on his back well here comes a mini review of another great tactical assault gear product check that it's actually a mini backpack it does not come with a vest you gotta buy it separately but that is their 100 ounce molly hydration bladder by TAG check out the pockets you got this exterior pocket for your gear, awesome. And then you have, of course, the sizing and capability to stow a big 100 ounce camel black, uh, camel black, camel back bladder. And here's another interior zip pouch for little doodads. What a great addition. And this thing is cost effective, guys. This whole thing, $38 US made. Look, it has a place for your morale straps, the same awesome molly strapping. It attaches nicely, and most importantly, unlike some other uh, hydration pouches that I've looked at, it's not that heavy. There's your molly capability. Look at how that sucker ties in. Talk about mill spec. Yeah, that's really, really sick. Great colors, great comfort, great quality. Uh, belt integration. Sometimes I talk about this on certain options. Uh, it, basically, this is meaningless to me. I don't want my LBE to integrate with a belt around my waist. That's kind of old school. That's what some of the older vests do. Some of the cross-draw vests that I've reviewed talk about that. It really isn't necessary, and to me, it's added complexity. Uh, again, I just want to be able to doff the vest, put it on. It rides very securely, and let's address that really quickly. I've had a moderate amount of weight in this gear. I would say up to level two. I've talked about my my levels, and I'm not talking armor, I'm talking uh, armament levels. Level three is like you're loaded for bear, level two, moderate, maybe 120 round combat load. Level one's much lighter, perhaps pistol only. I ran this up to level two, and in all my running, of which I have done a lot in this gear, mile after mile, this rig is absolutely stable. No shifting whatsoever. Um, so that is amazing. Uh, there's some other great options I've talked about on camera. I'll discuss perhaps some more as the years go on, months and years. Great option, very stable quality. I'm kind of all over the place on this stuff. Talked about the stitching. The zippers, like you saw in that hydration bladder, are huge thumbs up. The webbing is top notch. There's nothing I look at any of the tactical assault gear products and say, you know what, they could really improve this, you know, as far as quality goes. Uh, some minor things, you know, like the pull tabs, but that's so easily fixed. And by the way, this is a size 550 cord you probably want to have on the side. The only downside is you have a loop there. It could grab something. You guys, you know, will have to determine. But there's a way you could just, you know, weave that so it's a single integrated strap that couldn't catch. I just tied that in a real hurry. Okay, the quality is phenomenal on the Tactical Assault Gear plate carrier. Let's talk about this. Value. This is huge. Because this is a reason I did not previously review tactical assault gear. If you go back to some of my other videos and you heard me talking about a certain supplier whose pricing was a little bit out of whack, it was tactical assault gear. There you go. Yeah, I gave him some heat. I said, dudes, I love your products, but your pricing is outlandish. It's not in line. And, you know, at the time they were like, well, you know... Uh, got kind of a, I don't know, to be honest, an elitist attitude, the dude I talked with. Well, fast forward a year and they totally readjusted their prices. I don't know why. I don't know if I had anything to do with it. I'm pretty much sure I did not. I think they just looked at the market and said, like, we need to be more competitive. They readjusted their prices like 40% down in my estimation. I mean, I don't remember the cost on this, but it was a lot more expensive. It was like 50 bucks more expensive, maybe $60 more expensive than it is now. That brings this U.S. made option. And by the way, they are partnered with LC Industries. Yeah, it's a company that employs blind people. That's pretty awesome in and of itself. So LC Industries puts this together for them. Super high quality. US made and it's coming in, here we go, street price around $125. In the ballpark. To me, that's a doable price. I mean, if money is really, really tight for you guys, I'm talking to my cops, my SWAT officers, my soldiers, then you still might have to go with an offshore option, of which there are some really good ones like Condor. Get that stuff. You want to go American, you want to get something solid, and honestly, the build quality of this, a little bit better than Condor. There I said it. 
It is. Uh, it's just rugged and tough, and this has great field reports. I'm talking about soldiers who have been in Afghanistan and Iraq that have used this and really carried some heavy loads with it. Great field reports. The only thing you could really ding it on is the Velcro attachment on the side. Velcro, by its nature, will wear out over time. It will get seeds and crap in it. Well, speak of the devil, you can see some right there from the desert. And then also, and this is one reason I'm wearing the gloves, you can see how my gloves are furred up. It will grab your gloves if you're wearing a fabric glove. So, to me, it's for the price totally uh, worth putting up with. The value on this vest, then the bottom line is excellent, and that's why it's getting rolled in front of the Nut and Fancy camera right now. Track record, like I said, superb. I think I hit everything. And by the way, so are those uh, magnetic pistol uh, mag holders by Tactical Assault Gear. The only thing I would say on those are just a little bit heavy. There you have it. US made, comfortable, capable of carrying a lot of stuff pistol, pistol. for whatever PO you want, you want to put it in. And by the way, I didn't really talk about that because I've discussed it so much. Could be a soldier's rig, LE, SWAT officer, tactical competition, perhaps. Usually guys want to go with something faster. In other words, something off their belt. You know, these really unusual ways and fast ways of carrying stuff. How about WROL without rule of law rig? You bet for our responsible civilians in my audience. And then, as I say, a go rig, especially, especially if you configure with it, I'm sorry, configure it the way I've shown you. Horizontal pistol, by the way, you need to train with that. That's a different place, a different way of carrying, and you gotta be ultra safe. But you get trained with it, it is an awesome go rig. Everything you need, right here in the Tactical Assault Gear plate carrier. Highly recommended, that is the Nut and Fancy it Review, is. out.